There has been much ado made about the so-called war on drugs. It seems every politician running for office runs under the shadow of an uncompromising war on drugs. Channel 6 News recently aired a town hall meeting special on the war on drugs in Birmingham. President Bush even had a tel television special on the war on drugs. Yet neither President Bush nor Channel 6 News even dared mention the real killer in the drug world. His name is never even muttered. Who is the reigning king in the drug war? Who is it that claims 50 times more lies than all the illegal drugs combined? Who is it that costs the American people $130 billion every year to mop up his bloodbath of human carnage? Who is it that destroys one in every four families in America? Who is it that kills over 200,000 Americans each year? Is it crack? Is it cocaine? Could it be heroin? No. The undisputed heavyweight champion of the drug world and number one killer of Americans is King Alcohol, and nobody dares utter a peep. Friend, the following information should make your blood boil. Everybody talks about the lives lost in Vietnam War, and it was tragic. The loss of one life is too many. A welling wall was built in Washington with each soldier's name engraved who gave their life in Vietnam, and thank God they deserve it. During the Vietnam War, 57,000 Americans gave their lives fighting for this country. But in that same nine-year period when 57,000 died in Vietnam, over 2 million Americans were tragically killed by killer alcohol. During the Vietnam War, thousands of protesters were all over this country. What I want to know is, where are the protesters against killer alcohol? I mean, where is Jane Fonda when we really need her? Nobody opens their mouth against killer alcohol. Nobody makes a sound. Who speaks out for the over 7 million young children that live a life of child abuse, incest, and torture? Their little life is a hell on earth because of killer alcohol. Or we license it, we glamorize it, we glorify it, we promote it, we advertise it. The alcohol industry spends over $400 million a year advertising and glorifying the killer. By age 18, American children on an average have seen an estimated 100,000 beer commercials. They watch as their favorite sports stars and their heroes glamorize and promote killer alcohol. You only go around once in life, so grab for all the gusto you can, they say. God have mercy on these athletes who prostitute their God-given athletic ability, sacrificing our young people on the altar of alcohol. Some gullible parents are actually relieved that their children are drinking alcohol instead of using other drugs. But what many parents don't know is this. The number one killer of young people between the ages of 16 and 24 is alcohol-related automobile accidents. My heart was broken just a few weeks ago as I turned on the television. That weekend, two young girls were tragically killed in Birmingham in automobile accidents thanks to a drunk driver. It showed pictures of the mangled remains of the automobiles. They showed a video of one of the girls who had just graduated from college. All oh, those parents were so proud of their daughter. They'd raised and loved that little girl, got her up safely through the childhood diseases, through grammar school and high school, and put in her heart the desire to make something out of her life. Then they put her through college. And here comes a drunk driver who, for a little high, a little fun, murdered her. She was murdered, friend, just as much as he placed a gun in her head and pulled the trigger. Man, that makes my blood boil. That young girl's life abruptly ended just like that. And normally, the drunk driver does not even go to jail. One of the beer commercial's favorite celebrities was Billy Martin, former manager of the New York Yankees. Billy was tragically killed by killer alcohol on Christmas Day, 1989. I bet you never seen a picture of that side of the drinking scene, did you? No, let's just make Billy smiling and laughing as he grabs for all the gusto. They don't show you the end of killer alcohol. Here's the real picture. After spending most of Christmas Day at the local bar drinking, Billy and William Reedy, a Detroit bar owner, decided to head home. As they were heading home, their pickup truck lost control. They skidded over 200 feet off for a winding country road, then traveled another 100 feet down a four-foot deep gully before striking a concrete culvert. Billy Martin smashed through the windshield, fractured his neck, and was pronounced dead 23 minutes later.
Bet you never seen that picture, did you? No, I didn't think so. Now, wouldn't that make a good light beer commercial? Wouldn't that show you a true picture of Miller time? Showing Billy Martin hanging through the windshield. No, they don't show you the real end of the drinking scene. Killer alcohol is turning our highways into rivers of blood. It's turning our roads and interstates into a virtual slaughterhouse. On the average, every 50th car you see is powered by a drunk driver on their way to murder an innocent victim. Nearly 700 people a week will be killed, 100 a day, nearly 5 an hour around the clock. Over 25 million Americans have died in traffic accidents because of killer alcohol. People say, what are we going to do about AIDS? What are we going to do about cancer? President Bush has given great attention to the 2,000 or so Americans currently held hostage in Iraq. But friend, in the six weeks since Iraq invaded Kuwait, over 4,000 innocent Americans have been murdered by a drunk driver. What I want to know is, what are we going to do about those innocent people who are as a lamb led to the slaughter, who are murdered by the thousands on the highways across America by a drunk driver, and nobody utters a sound? And just one year, killer alcohol will slaughter more Americans on our highways than all the American soldiers killed in all four years of World War II. The next victim might be you, or your husband, or your wife, or your precious little baby. You better think about that, friend, next time you buy that drink, next time you buy that six-pack. You are footing the bill for the murder of somebody's loved one, somebody's little child, just maybe... Maybe your own. Next time you send your wife or your children to the grocery store, next time you send your husband off to work, beware, it just might be the last. There's a killer stalking the highways of America. There are over 18 million alcoholics in America. Two out of every three adults drink killer alcohol. Thanks to killer alcohol, cirrhosis of the liver kills over 30,000 people each year and rising. Over 80% of all fire deaths are due to killer alcohol, 65% of the drownings, 22% of home accidents, 77% of falls, 36% of pedestrian accidents, and over 80% of all arrests are linked to killer alcohol. Violent behavior attributed to killer alcohol accounts for approximately 65% of all murders, 40% of all assaults, 35% of all rapes, 30% of other sex crimes, 30% of all suicides. And one of the most disturbing statistics of all, 60%, 60% of all child abuse is due to killer alcohol. No, let's wage a war on crack, on cocaine, on heroin, and on marijuana, but don't dare even mention killer alcohol. Press and Congress have repeatedly called to our attention the country's large deficit, But what they don't tell you this is, friend, killer alcohol costs taxpayers over $130 billion each year to clean up the mess. Boy, wouldn't that go a long way in balancing our budget? Not even to mention the thousands of lives, homes, and marriages we'd salvage. No, let's cut back military. Let's cut back Social Security. Let's raise taxes. Don't dare do anything to deter killer alcohol. Why is that? I'll tell you why, friend, because many of the politicians in this country are drunkards themselves, and a lot of them are hiding behind closed doors with a pocket full of blood money as the alcohol industry buys them off. Listen, the beer barons and the liquor louses run this country, friend. Do you know what city has the highest per capita consumption of killer alcohol in our nation? You guessed it, Washington, D.C., Killer alcohol can take an otherwise virtuous woman or man and make them forget their marriage vows. Two out of every three marriages presently end in divorce. A Miami judge recently shocked the news media when he stated that a whopping 90% of all divorces were caused by drinking problems. Killer alcohol has destroyed our homes. 85% of all the children in foster homes are there thanks to killer alcohol. God only knows how many women and children have been beaten black and blue because of killer alcohol. God only knows how many hearts have been broken because of killer alcohol. God only knows how many tears have been shed because of killer alcohol. 
Mental illness and the homeless is in epidemic proportions in America. It's beyond anything imaginable. A panel of 20 doctors and scientists were asked in Pageant Magazine what is regarded as the single greatest cause of insanity in the U.S. They all replied without exception, alcohol. You've heard it said that one or two drinks won't hurt you. You've probably even heard it said that an occasional drink might even be good for your health. Huh? Not according to the latest statistics, friend. An article in U.S. News and World Report says alcohol begins to alter the functioning of virtually every organ from the moment it enters the body. The article goes on to say, quote, experts believe even occasional drinks can be dangerous, end quote. The Bible gives a perfect description of alcohol in Proverbs 23:29. Who hath woe? Who hath sorrow? Who hath contentions? Who hath babblings? Who hath wounds without cause? Who hath redness of eyes? They that tarry long at the wine. They that go to seek mixed wine. Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, when it giveth his color in the cup, when it moveth itself aright. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Thine eyes shall behold strange woman, and thine heart shall utter perverse things. Yea, thou shalt be as he that lieth down in the midst of the sea, or as he that lieth upon the top of a mast. They have stricken me, and shalt thou say, I was not sick. They have beaten me, and I felt it not. When shall I awake? I will seek it yet again. The Bible says about alcohol, At last it biteth like a serpent. It's interesting God's, what God said, it biteth like a serpent. Do you know what a serpent bite is, friend? Poison. Did you know that alcohol is a poison? It's a pure, simple poison. Every major organ in your body is poisoned by alcohol. Why is it when people get drunk they have a tendency to vomit? Because your stomach knows poison when it comes down. You've seen on TV shows when someone orders a drink and the bartender says, Name your poison. You say, Oh, come on now. It's not a poison. Let me ask you a question then. When a man is drunk, what do they call it? He is intoxicated. Do you know what a toxic is? It is a poison. A man who is drunk is a man who has literally poisoned himself. What makes a man drunk? Scientists have only recently discovered the physical process that creates the slurred speech and drunken stupor. Once in the bloodstream, alcohol causes a coagulation of the red corpuscles referred to as sludging. The blood thickens so that it cannot flow freely and clogs in the small capillaries where the metabolic exchange of life-giving oxygen takes place. In many cases, this cutoff of oxygen is so severe that the starved cells literally die. Many times the cells that are deprived of oxygen are brain and nerve cells. And friend, the brain and nerve cells are the only cells in your body that do not reproduce. Brain cells destroyed are never replaced. Killer alcohol literally kills your brain and nerve cells, which leads to permanent damage of the brain and nervous system. Autopsies performed on drinkers often reveal hollow cavities in the skull where entire convolutions of the brain have disappeared. The next time you see that man staggering drunk, friend, you are watching a man literally destroying his brain. You say an occasional drink's not going to make me an alcoholic. Don't bet on it. According to studies, you have at least a 1 in 10 chance of becoming an alcoholic from that very first drink. And according to scientists' own words, quote, Every time you take a drink, you are playing Russian roulette. Any given sip, you may pull the switch that will change your metabolism and turn you into a chronic alcoholic and destroy your life, end quote. And one out of every ten alcoholics commits suicide. You better think about that before you take that so-called occasional drink, friend. I've had people tell me several times, well, Jesus drank wine. The Bible makes a clear distinction between fermented liquor and unfermented wine. Speaking of fermented liquor, Proverbs 23 says, Look not thou upon the wine when it is red, speaking of fermentation, when it giveth his color in the cup, 
when it moveth itself aright, speaking of the bubbling and the carbonation of fermentation. At the last it biteth like a serpent and stingeth like an adder. Proverbs 20 verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink is raging, and whosoever is deceived thereby is not wise. A description of unfermented wine can be found in Isaiah 65 verse 8. As the new wine is found in the cluster, Genesis 40.11 gives even a clearer picture of new wine. I took grapes and pressed them in Pharaoh's cup. People say, well, Jesus drank wine at the Last Supper with his apostles. He did? You better go back and reread your Bible, friend. In Matthew, Mark, and Luke, where the account of the Last Supper is found, the word wine is never even mentioned. The Bible very carefully says they drank fruit of the vine. Well, people say, well, Jesus turned water into wine at the marriage in Cana. Listen, friend, if Jesus Christ turned that water into fermented liquor, he directly disobeyed Habakkuk 2.15. Woe unto him that giveth his neighbor drink, that putteth thy bottle to him, and maketh him drunketh also. And my friend, if he did that, he was a sinner just like you and me. And the Bible makes it very, very clear in 1 Peter 2.22, 2 Corinthians 5.21, and several other verses that Jesus Christ was without sin. He could not have turned that water into fermented liquor. I was passing out tracts and witnessing to some young people late one night in some parking lots. There were several hundred young people there drinking and smoking dope. I got to talking to one young man. He said he was a Christian and knew Jesus Christ as his personal Savior, and I believe he did. All this time he was taking swigs from a bottle of wine. I asked him, if you're a Christian, what in the world are you doing with this crowd and out here drinking wine? He quickly replied, well, Jesus drank wine. I told him, listen, friend, Jesus Christ never drank it any fermented liquor. And I can prove that to you from the Bible. But let me ask you a question. Can you really picture Jesus Christ out here in this crowd drinking wine? I'll never forget his reaction. He looked down at the ground as he let go of the wine bottle as it fell to the pavement. He then looked up at me with a tear streaming down his cheeks. He said, Preacher, what's God going to do to me? Friend, God himself placed a very, very strong warning in 1 Corinthians 6.10. No drunkard shall inherit the kingdom of God. Is alcohol worth it? Friend, alcohol will never satisfy that unquenchable thirst burning inside of you. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can quench that thirst. Jesus says in John 7.37, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Jesus says again in John 14, verse 14, John 4, 14, But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. Oh, why don't you let the Lord Jesus Christ satisfy that thirst in your soul today, friend? Oh, how he loves you. He's been waiting for you a long, long time, friend. You'll never regret it. You may not have a drinking problem, but if you've never trusted Jesus Christ, there's an unsatisfied thirst and a longing for fulfillment in your soul, and you know it. There's something missing. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, verse 20, The eyes of men are never satisfied. You'll never be satisfied without Jesus Christ. Never, never. Would you like to be saved? Oh, it's so simple. Just pray this simple prayer and mean it with all your heart. Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner. And unless you save me, I'm lost forever. I thank you, Lord, for dying for me at Calvary. And I come to you now the best way I know how and ask you to save me. I now receive you as my Savior and give you control of my life. In Jesus Christ's name, amen.